Hello YouTube, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another awesome video. It's Monday night. You know what that means? Time for some Raw. We are, this Saturday, we are having a special live event only on the WWE Network, which will kick off the Go to Hell Tour for Brock Lesnar. So, but we are still one month away from the next pay-per-view, Hell in a Cell. So far, only one match has been booked. But how will that change tonight? I got my notes. Let's get started. Okay. First up, John Cena comes out. And he brings something back that we've all enjoyed as long as he's WWE and United States Champion. Yes, it is the return of the John Cena Open, in, uh, open US... Wait, the John Cena US Title Open Challenge. Where he defends his title against pretty much anyone who wants a piece of him. And who wants a piece of him? Someone from the New Day! Yes! And they give John Cena a new slogan. Hustle, loyalty, booty. I love it. But anyway, John's not having it. So he asks them to send one of them into the ring to fight him or he'll kick all three of their asses. So Xavier Woods decides to get in the ring in his first singles match in a long time. So we transition to our first match. John Cena versus Xavier Woods for the United States title. This was a pretty good match. A lot of people this was, a lot of people don't really get that Xavier Woods is a fantastic in-ring competitor, being that he's more has taken more of a outside managerial role as opposed to what he had before. But he can still go. He is in excellent condition and the guy is just phenomenal in the ring. Unfortunately, the New Day decided to get the rest of the New Day decided to get in there and just jolly stomp on Cena until the Dudley boys come in with the save. Wait a minute. John Cena. Dudley boys. New Day. This smells like No. You know it's the Mac Miller tank. players we ain't gonna have no fighting back and forth here so what we're gonna have is a nice six-man tag team match and the winner will go one-on-one -on -one with the Undertaker holla holla yep that's right. We transition to our next matchup, the Dudley Boys teaming with John Cena, I had to get my notes, against the New Day. This was a sort of okay match, nice little psychology in it with the Dudley Boys, and they don't seem to get along that, all that well with Cena for some reason. There's some miscommunication involving Big E and um, John Cena where John gets speared and he gets taken out. And the Dudleys get beaten up by the rest of the New Day, and the New Day picks up the win. Good for them. Next up, we got some backstage stuff with the Authority. And they're kind of concerned about Kane, because apparently some un anonymous person, <coughs> Seth Rollins, was snitched on Kane, and now Human Resources has decided to do an evaluation on Kane. Kane is in his tri chipper troll Kane mode, as he is not really affected by, by Seth's attempts to troll him. But anyway, we turn this into our next matchup. Big Show versus Mark Henry. Now, this match was primarily to build up the match that is going to happen at the live event on Saturday. Big Show versus Brock Lesnar. Big Show squashes Mark Henry, which isn't that much of a big deal anymore since Mark Henry isn't, as, isn't pretty much a joke of what he used to be. Miss you, Hall of Fame, Mark Henry. Yeah, and of course everyone knows that Brock Lesnar is going to eat the Big Show alive. Big Show wins. Next up, Charlotte, and next up, Miss TV. And Charlotte and Becky Lynch are today's guests, and they proceed to rip Miz a new one. Then, <sighs> Bella Twins, and Alicia Fox, a.k.a. the female Virgil, comes out. And they bore us, and bore us with their shit. And surprisingly, Charlotte and Becky pull off some pretty good burns. 
then Paige comes out and she decides to rip on both of them but then uh, uh, some stuff breaks out everyone's beating the crap out of each other wait a minute Team Bella Team PBC why does this look familiar? You know it's the Mac Militant. Now hold on there, minute, bitches. Now we can't have you guys want to fight up in this ring. Then we're going to have a six diva tag team match. And the winner goes one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker. Teddy, I don't think the women should be fighting the... Holla, holla, holla! Yep, we have yet another six-man tag match tonight. Is Teddy Long back or something? I don't know. It's between the reunited PB Team PBC versus Team Bella. As someone pointed out, it's painful to watch legitimately talented wrestlers, well, exceptionally talented wrestlers like Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Paige having to hold back to make the Bellas and Alicia Fox look like credible threats to them. It's a shame. The match was okay. It's what you could expect. Paige decides to abandon Charlotte. Then Natty comes out to provide some help and make, do a replacement, but Paige is like, nope, not having it. One, two, three. Charlotte jobs to the fucking Bellas. Shit. Next up, the primetime players versus the, the, the Wyatt family's Luke Harper and Braun Strowman. This is an okay match. This is more of a match to show off how threatening of a tag team Harper and Strowman are. Strowman, of course, even though he's somewhat limited in the ring, he, they book him properly as this unmovable, unstoppable force of pain and destruction. PTP put up a good fight, but in the end, Braun Strowman and, the, and Harper win. Anyway, also with some backstage segments, we got the HR chick um, interviewing uh, Rollins. And for some reason, um, Kane comes in with a, with a box. And a nice call back to the movie Seven. Seth's like, Kane, what's in the box? It's just a present. What's in the box? Just a present. Open it. <gasps> what's in the box? Anyway, it's the head of Seth Rollins. Now, before you ask, it's actually the, the head off his bronze statue that was destroyed by Sting. Mike right before a night of champions and Seth kind of found that creepy next up we have the renewal of another rivalry as Stardust and Neville face off Neville and Stardust have a great chemistry together in the ring the styles mesh very well together and they always have good entertaining matchups this one was a short one but a good one Neville prepares to go for the red arrow and then all hail King Barrow Yes, right. King Barrett, the Baron of Bad News, makes his triumphant return after being stabbed in the back by Stardust. He hands out bull hammers to both Neville and Stardust, and Clint makes the statement that the King has returned. You know, Lord of the Rings would be a lot better if Wade Barrett was in it. Think about it. He just he just take over Gondor by bull hammering everyone. There'd be a, in the Middle Earth would be a wasteland of bull-hammered orcs, elves, and dwarves. Not even Sauron of many colors would be able to stand up to the royal bullhammer. An interesting idea for a fan fiction. But anyway, regardless. Next up, we move on to the HR Ladies Report. I forgot her name. On Kane, that they do it in the ring. Uh, Seth Rollins comes out probably high or drunk or something, and rants and raves about how Kane is a sadistic monster and presents a video package about how much of a monster Kane is. Kane counters his trolling with his own trolling of showing how much of an utter twat Seth Rollins is. 
The HR lady says that, well, Kane is not is in, in his right faculties. He is probably the best employee there, and the fans give him a standing ovation. I love Troll Kane. Meanwhile, she says pretty much that Seth Rollins, on the other hand, is an utter asshat, and he is hard to work with. Seth jumps in the ring, and he just gets into Kane's face. He drops his belt, and Kane, being the nice guy he is, picks it up for him, but eats a pedigree. Then, Seth goes outside and brings out a steel chair and just wails on his leg, in a scene almost reminiscent of Johnny Five getting brutally beaten within an inch of his mechanical life in Short Circuit 2. I can't think about that scene without tearing up. But yeah, he cuts a, a ranting promo about how weak and pathetic Kane is, and, have him, and they have him stretchered out, and they load him into an ambulance, but the ambulance stops. Red smoke emerges from the back, and out from the ambulance emerges Kane, fully masked and ready. He is limping for a little bit, but a quick stamp is like, fuck that shit. And he comes to the ring and utterly all handles uh, poor Seth. Poor bastard. Had no idea who he was fucking with. In the words of Alucard from Helsinger Bridge, Seth, you done goofed. Next up, uh, Bo Dallas decides to rip on the, the local team, I forgot what their names are, and he runs afoul of Randy Orton, who proceeds to beat him within an inch of his life and RKO's him in a squash match. Doesn't need to be said. Next up, Oh no, 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 no. Kevin Owens versus Rusev. This stemmed from a, that tag match they had last week, and. Well, Kevin Owens was right to walk out. He didn't want anyone, anyone part of that Dolph Ziggler Rusev storyline. That is a black hole of suck. And he didn't want to be a part of that. So him and Rusev have a match. It wasn't even so much of a match as they decided to go outside and beat the crap out of Ru out of Ryback, who was on commentary. Then, Ziggler shows up, the whole thing is foobarred, no tag team match, fuck it, I don't care, let's move on. But we have something great after that. Paul Heyman's there. Yeah. So, uh, Paul's telling us all about how Brock Lesnar is awesome and how he is the undisputed champion. Yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me, Paul, tell me how bad he is. Yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. And then Big Show comes out, and I got a case of blue balls. You know, there are certain things in light in wrestling you just don't do. You don't take Steve Austin's beer. You don't get into, you, you don't get into a head buddy match with Chris Benoit. And you don't interrupt a Paul Heyman promo. That is a capital offense, Big Show, in Suplex City, and the punishment is coming, swift, and it will be painful. Even Paul Heyman's like, you know what? Fuck this, I'm out. Ruin the promo. Brock's gonna kill you on Saturday. Main event time. Roman Reigns. Bray Wyatt. This time, they finally at least try to settle it. Now, before they, before... Seth, I mean, Dean was talking to, to his buddy Roman about how they can't depend on Randy Orton because of what happened with them and Chris Jericho. Uh, Randy's like, hey, I'll help out if I can, but after this is open season on the Wyatts, I still got a sort of schedule with them. So Roman gets in the ring, Bray comes out with his boys, and he's like, and Roman actually cuts a pretty solid promo. He pretty much calls the other two his tricycles, and how can they look at you? You just a little bitch. This is what I meant when I said this feud would be good for Roman, and so far it has been. He's been evolving, slowly but steadily. His in-ring work is improving, his mic work is, is miles above what it once was when they were trying to turn him into The Rock 2.0, and now they're just making him into a badass ass-kicker, like, you get your ass in this ring, and let me whoop your ass like a man. Apparently it was enough that, Bra that, that Bray pushed his boys back and entered into the match with Bray, with Roman one-on-one. -on -one. This was actually a pretty solid match. Probably one of Roman's better ones that he's had all year. Very good psychology, very good brutality. Saw a lot of moves that, that Roman didn't use before and he's busting out tonight. Very athletic match. Unfortunately, it ends in a double disqualification because the two of them just wanted to beat the ever-loving piss out of each other. 
And even after the match was over, they spilled out into the audience. They're beating the shit out of each other. And unbelievably, Bray Wyatt hits Roman Reigns with one of the stage technicians. I am not even joking. Griffoon, if you're watching this, I know you missed Raw because you don't have internet. You didn't have internet by the time you get you, you barely got your internet back. I know you're gonna miss this, but for real, he grabs a technician and throws him at Roman. He hit that motherfucker with another motherfucker. That was awesome in itself. Then Bray does his little flying body splash thing, and they break through the barricade. And he struggles to his feet. The crowd is going absolutely ape shit. And he stands on top of the of the ta uh, of the uh, announce table, already. And then out of nowhere, Roman Reigns comes up, leaps up, and does a flying spear through the table. Crowd goes up the ape shit, more so than they have for any Roman Reigns match to date. And I agree that w it was a good match, but that ending was phenomenal. This, uh, this feud has been good for Roman Reigns, and with a little bit more seasoning, he could be ready for that main event spot um, that the WWE has always wanted him to be in, but not right now. He still needs more seasoning. But yeah, that's Raw. My thoughts? Uh, like last week, it was really up and down. There were some parts of it that I liked. Troll Kane, of course. Uh, some of the tag matches were kind of draggy. The Divas tag match could have been better if... Team Bad was in it instead of Team Bella. That last match was awesome. And we had a Paul Heyman promo, but then Big Show had to go in and give us all blue balls for it. So, that's what it is. So yeah, that's my video. You like what you see? Link, comment, subscribe below. Got any questions, comments, or just want to talk about wrestling? Leave it below, I will get back to you. Uh, you want to talk, uh, if you want to support the channel? Hitting that like button helps, as does hitting one of these many advertisements spread around this channel. Or if you want to donate directly, it's up there, you know what to do. So, until next time, Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat saying good day, and holla 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 holla.